Luke Fickle's first year at Wisconsin did not go as planned. The Badgers entered the season with some lofty expectations, started off ranked 19th in the country, but all came crumbling down pretty quick as the Badgers went just 7-6 and six with a bowl loss to LSU. This year, they returned plenty of talent, but now have a much more difficult schedule than they faced last year. So the question is, what can the Badgers do in 2024? Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, guys. We're so glad you could join us today. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check down everything down in the description below, including our website, thegridironexpert.com. Home to those expert picks, some of the best spread picks in the entire country for one of the lowest prices in the entire country. We're beating out over 80% of the national handicappers each of the last six years. We're going to make it seven straight years by the end of this year, and no other analyst can guarantee you that. No other analyst can offer you that for one of the lowest prices you'll find anywhere else. So go check it out. The link's for everything down in the description below, where you can just become a member of our GE Nation and fully enhance your college football experience this fall. Season's going to be here before we know it. So Wisconsin... Man, I was high on them last year. I'll be the first to admit, I think I had the Badgers at like, I may have had them at 10-2 and two, if I'm actually not mistaken. I was high on Wisconsin last year. Love the Luke Fickle hire. Love the talent they were bringing in. Love they were changing the offense up a little bit. The schedule looked really manageable, really favorable. And then they lost to Washington State in week two, and it just all kind of came unraveling. Yes, they faced a lot of injuries uh, that they hopefully will not face again now. You know, Tanner Mordecai got hurt. Their running backs got hurt. They were a beat-up team for a lot of the year, and that credited to a lot of their struggles down the stretch, because this was a team that at one point was 5-2, and two, but then lost three straight games to Ohio State, Indiana, and Northwestern before having to battle back and win their final two just to clinch ball eligibility, get to that seven-win mark. The Badgers have been to a bowl game 22 years in a row, but they could be an underdog as many as eight games this year. So can they make it 23 straight years? We take a look at their offense. They only averaged 23.5 points per game last year. That was bad. Obviously, they battled injuries. We know that. But now they replaced Tanner Mordecai with Tyler Van Dyke, another transfer QB coming in from Miami, where he threw for over 7,400 yards and 54 touchdowns in his career with the Hurricanes. Chaz Malusi is back at running back. Yeah, it was Braylon Allen, but Malusi's going to be solid. Will Pauling and Bryson Green both return. They were both the top two wide receivers for Wisconsin last year. And per usual, the Badgers will have a very strong offensive line. Defensively, hopefully Alex Grinch does not completely you know, poison this defense. He is the co-defensive coordinator in Madison coming over from USC. Guy that has tons of coaching experience, although it hasn't been good coaching. So hopefully he has not ruined Wisconsin. I don't think he will. Eight starters are back. They only allowed 20.2 points per game defensively last year. And they've got, again, some of their top players returning. you got Hunter Wohler returning in the secondary. 120 tackles and two interceptions last year. Jake Chaney returns at linebacker, one of the best players on this defense. Daryl Peterson returns up front on the defensive line, led the team with four and a half sacks last year. Ricardo Hallman, seven interceptions at cornerback last year. He returns, so a strong secondary, pretty solid front seven, not many weaknesses on this Wisconsin defense, and that's typically what you expect from a Wisconsin-led team or Wisconsin team, period. This team has the talent to get to their 23rd straight bowl. question is, do they have the talent to maybe contend in this massive Big Ten conference and now includes 18 teams. We take a look at their schedule. Here's the one thing I want you to look at is the home slate. They host, host, in Madison, they host Alabama, Penn State, and Oregon. Those are three potential top 10 teams that will have to come to Madison. I'm going to tell you right now, they're going to win at least one of those. There is no way that Wisconsin, and we know how exciting and how hyped Camp Randall Stadium can get. It is not an easy place to play. There is no way the Badgers lose all three of those games. They will pull off at least one of those upsets because they'll be underdogs in all three. The question is, which one, and will that upset even matter if they can't take care of business in the other games? Well, I'm here to tell you right now they'll start 2-0. They're going to beat Western Michigan. They're going to beat South Dakota. They're 2-0. and Easy money there. Then Alabama. Are they going to beat Alabama? I mean, now would be the time to do it, right? Kalen DeBoer, now the new head coach. Nick Saban gone. They've got some questions. And the secondary down in Tuscaloosa... But it's not going to be Alabama. 
Not going to be Alabama. Jalen Milrow, still way too good. And just because Nick Saban's gone, everybody thinks Alabama's going to struggle mightily. That's not the case. DeBoer is a phenomenal coach. He's got a veteran quarterback that was one play away from playing for a national title last year. The offense, I think, is going to be just fine. And DeBoer, an offensive-minded coach, you know they're going to be good. The front seven, defensively, is actually very good for Alabama. It's the secondary that concerns me. And I'm not sure Wisconsin, with Van Dyke, who has turnover issues and had turnovers at Miami, if Wisconsin's going to be the team to exploit Alabama secondary. They'll get exploited by somebody, but it's not going to be Wisconsin. So the Crimson Tide and their first true test under Kalen DeBoer get to quality road win at Wisconsin, and the batters drop to 2-1. and one. Coming out of their bye week, we get the Alex Grinch game. We got the road trip to USC, a long road trip out to LA. I like the Trojans in this game. USC is not going to be ba- as bad as people think. Yeah, they went 8-5 and five last year, which was a big disappointment, but they're going to be solid this year. Miller Moss, love what I saw from him out of the bowl game. He's only going to get better with Lincoln Riley as his head coach. The defense was atrocious under Alex Grinch. They now bring in DeAnton Lynn, who had a top 10 defense at UCLA just last year. USC returns nine starters defensively. I still give the defensive edge to Wisconsin, but USC's defense is going to improve drastically. And kind of similar to Alabama game, the Badgers offense right now, to me, is not explosive enough or consistent enough to beat USC on the road and to exploit that defense, even if they aren't all that great. The Trojans get the win at home, and Wisconsin is 2-2. Two and two. They'll cruise past Purdue. They've won 17 straight over the Boilermakers by an average of 20 points per game, including a 38-17 win last year. So they'll cruise past the Boilermakers, and then things get a little bit tougher there. You know, For the rest of the year, things get pretty tough. So sitting at 3-2, and two, almost at the halfway point of the year, and now you've got to find three more wins just to keep that bowl streak alive. The road game at Rutgers, I think, is a loss. Rutgers is good this year. That is hard to believe. A lot of people don't want to believe it, but it is true. The Scarlet Knights are the real deal. 16 returning starters from a team that won seven games last year had the exact same record as the Badgers. Yes, Wisconsin won 24-13 in Madison last year. Now they've got to go to Piscataway against a better Rutgers team than they were last year. Last year, they were still young and managed to win seven games. Now they're more experienced. The defense is one of the best in this conference. They have an elite running back in Kyle Manunga. They've got quarterback improvement. Ethan Kaliak Manis transferring into Rutgers from Minnesota. Solid wide receivers. Everything is looking good for Greg Schiano and Piscataway. And in what I think is going to be a very low-scoring game, similar to what we saw last year, only 24-13, to 13, Rutgers is the one that walks away with a victory this time. So Wisconsin drops to 3-3. Three and three. They then beat Northwestern. Four and three. I think they probably should have beaten Northwestern last year had they been healthy. The score wouldn't show that, but they were obviously, and to me, a be- if they are fully healthy, Wisconsin is a significantly better team than Northwestern. They lost by 14 points to the Wildcats, 24 to 10, but they were 12 point favorites in the game. So almost a reverse cover for Northwestern. Obviously, Wisconsin, again, had they been fully healthy at quarterback, fully healthy at running back, should have gotten the job done. Northwestern was a team of destiny last year, winning eight games. Lightning is not going to strike twice for the Wildcats. They will take a big step back. So despite the game being in Evanston, they get that win. Four wins. Then Penn State. It's one of those big three we talked about. Will Penn State be the upset win against you know a top 10 team, potential top 10 team that we talked about? Alabama, Penn State, Oregon. Three massive games that Wisconsin gets the host. Is this where they pull off the upset? Yes. Yes, it is. They will beat Penn State. I think they line up perfectly with Penn State, and I think they get Penn State at a perfect time. Penn State has Ohio State the following week. Wisconsin's just, at this point, record-wise average. They're 4-3, and three, probably not playing fantastic ball. I could see Penn State, if they're undefeated at this point, maybe overlooking Wisconsin a little bit, knowing that Ohio State game is the one they've had circled on their calendar for the last six, seven years. They haven't beaten Ohio State since they beat them back in, what, 2016? They want that win bad. And Wisconsin's like, hey, you've got to still go through us. You've still got to play us in Madison. We've got a defense that can hang with your defense. We've got an offense that is improving and can probably hang with your offense. Penn State's offense isn't bad. They've got a new offensive coordinator, but Drew Aller isn't a world beater. At least he wasn't last year. They are not an explosive offense by any means. They've got a great running back core. But if Wisconsin bottles that up and says, hey, Drew Aller, come into Madison, beat us solely through the air, I don't know if he can do it. Despite the offensive coordinator change, I don't know if he can do it. So I like Wisconsin in this game. These two teams match up very well in terms of style. It's going to be a slower, low-scoring game. Neither offense plays extremely fast, but Wisconsin at home with Penn State possibly looking ahead to that big Ohio State game pulls off the upset. 
They've got five wins, and now Madison is rocking. Five wins, two conference losses, so probably out of the conference title race because of the teams they got to play, like Ohio State, Oregon, teams like that. But still, five wins, one away from a bowl game. Can they get it on the road to Iowa? No. No, so they're riding high off the win over Penn State, but they fall at Kinnick. Iowa nearly pulled off the reverse spread last year, 15-6. to six, Or they did pull off the reverse spread. Wisconsin was favored by nine points over the Hawkeyes last year and lost at home 15-6 to six as nine-point favorites. Now they got to go on the road to an Iowa team that's arguably better than the one they had last year. The defense is arguably better. The offense, we keep saying every year, can't get any worse. Surely it can't get any worse now with Cade McNamara fully healthy and a new offensive coordinator. They'll lose to Iowa. Very tough place to play, we should add. Coming out of the bye week, they'll lose to Oregon. We said they're only going to win one of them, I think at least. They're only going to win one of Alabama, Penn State, Oregon. They match up best against Penn State. They get the job done there. Oregon, despite coming off that bye week, it's a major major trap game for the Ducks, but way too much talent. That offense is going to be one of the best in the nation. The defense is loaded, especially, I mean, all three levels, but that secondary, my goodness, Kobe Savage and uh, Muhammad coming in from Washington. I mean, this is just a good, good Oregon team that is a national title favorite for a reason. I don't think Wisconsin has the offensive firepower to hang with the Ducks in this game. So they will lose that, but I think they round out their season. Still in need of one more win to get to a bowl game. They round it out with back-to-back wins to finish 7-5. and five. I think they can beat Nebraska. They have won the last nine games against the Cornhuskers. Nine straight games against Nebraska. They're 11-1 and one against them in Big Ten play. They won 24-17 last year. They've won the last three by one possession. So the Cornhuskers are getting closer. And if they want to snap that streak, now's the time to do it with home field advantage and a very good team in year two under Matt Rule. But it's one of those things where I'm not going to pick against Wisconsin in this game until it actually happens, until Nebraska actually wins. And I do think Wisconsin can beat Nebraska. I still do believe that. So they will beat the Cornhuskers in Lincoln. And then Minnesota at home, the most played FBS rivalry, the 134th meeting between the Golden Gophers and the Badgers. So, a lot of history there, obviously. They dominated the series for so long, winning 14 straight from 2004 to 2017, but they have split the last six with Minnesota, 3-3 three and three in that span. But they did win 28-14 to 14 on the road last year. Senior day for Wisconsin, trying to match last year's win total, guarantee themselves a winning record against a Minnesota team that's going to be wildly inconsistent in my eyes this year. Give me Wisconsin to defend home t- home field, defend their home turf. They finish 7-5. and five. Now, for many, that's disappointing. That's not Wisconsin football. But there are no divisions in the Big Ten anymore. They're not getting to beat up on Purdue, Northwestern, Illinois, teams like that every single week. It's just not happening. They now have to play Alabama, Penn State, Oregon, Nebraska on the road, which they were in the West, obviously. But it's a tougher schedule is what I'm trying to say. It's a much tougher schedule. It's still year two under a new coach and Luke Fickle is trying to continue to hit his stride. To me, I view it as a successful season considering how tough the schedule is, considering some of the question marks they have on the roster, considering it's only year two under your coach. Seven and five, back-to-back winning seasons, 23 straight bowl appearances. But next year, next year could be the year that Luke Fickle really hits his stride and Wisconsin starts to return to the top of the Big Ten standings. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and of course, check out everything down in the description below. That includes our website, thegridironexpert.com. Home to those expert picks, some of the best spread picks in the entire country. The earlier you sign up for those, the better it is for you. The more you will win. We can guarantee you that. So go sign up for those today. The link's for everything down in the description below. And once again, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert. Oh,